Volterra pertussis will cause whooping cough, and they share the same vaccination. We will mention real quick. Then there is a bunch of uh, bacteria called ammonia, which is Streptococcus ammonia, Staphylococcus aureus, Legionella, Microplasma, Klebsiella, and Funicytosis. Then we will have a Streptococcus pyogenes. We mentioned a couple of times already, we'll talk about detail. That one called strips rot. And then today we will mention meningitis, including Haemophilus influenza, Neisseria meningitis, and Streptococcus ammonia. Then the last one we already talked about is tuberculosis, microbacterial tuberculosis. If you still remember, we're using acid fast stain to identify it because mycolic acids has a very waxy cell wall. So in other words, what you learned in your exam one, and also the lab section, all those information, you cannot be forget or throw them away. Because it will be a little bit comprehensive here, we will mention lots of the terminology we already talked about in exam one. So exam is isolated, but the knowledge is connected. So that's keep in mind. Uh, before I go to the detail, I want to briefly mention several things. Is Legionella. Um, this guy, Legionella, this one, we call it a Legionella ammonia. This has happened in 1970s in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania during the Army Convention. So after that, lots of the soldiers go to take a shower. And after showers, they have all have a very mild ammonia symptoms. So we also call it, we'll call them walking ammonia. And a couple of days later, they will be recovered. So that's called an example for the walking ammonia. However, Legionella is also an indicator bacteria for drinking water. For your municipal water and the water resource, Legionella has to be periodically tested, and it is zero tolerance in drinking water. And although we don't mention that too much, but I just want to let you know, this has happened often in a shower system, in an air conditioning, in those aquatic system. That's the Legionella where it comes from. It is comes from an army convention back in 1972 in Philadelphia. Okay, but it's not severe. Uh, the fatality rate is very low at about 0.01%. So I don't want to talk about too much. Here you also see mycoplasma ammonia, and that is also uh, walking ammonia, which means it will be recovered a couple of days. So we don't talk about that uh, too much in detail. Okay, so we want to move to really the big stuff at the beginning. The first one, corner. Bacteria diphtheria. Okay, first of all, corner bacteria diphtheria. Uh, it should be italic, I can't do it, so I just write like that. Always remember the first gene name, second species name. So, what is corner bacteria really mean? It comes from a Greek word, corner, which means club. And the diphtheria is a toxin. And we will talk about that. It is an exotoxin. So, first thing, we want to talk about the characteristics of corner bacteria diphtheria. Look at the picture, what it looks like. It is gram-positive rods club shape. Remember, exam question, three major items for a gram reaction or a gram stain. It is important in the clinical area. Gram-positive. Gram reaction, lots, morphology, club shape is arrangement. So what it looks like? Somehow like this. Somehow.
sometimes like that. It is look like a clump. So it is club shape. You can understand if two people stack together in a nightclub, if you want to make a joke, OK? Inside of here, you will see some of the circle. This is we mentioned a couple of times called inclusion. It is the place for storage, some of the minerals, or some of the chemicals here typically for phosphate. Now when you see the picture there, this is underneath phase contrast microscope. That's why we can see the internal structure. If we not just use general light microscope, we cannot see that. Another some of the understand some of the textbook also say the shape very like Chinese characteristic too. Okay, it looks like that. So it is a club shape. And we also call it palisades. And we also call it a diprococcal for a log shape. But I don't talk it too much because it's kind of confusing you, so we always just say gram positive lots and club shape. Okay, that's a morphology. Second, what type of the disease it will cause? What type of the disease will cause? There is a basically two symptoms. Cedo membrane in tonsil area and uh, swelling neck, we call it bull neck. Okay, what happened? This is basically is happening for immigrant kids. Immigrant kids to the United States. Let's say uh, somehow maybe uh, two year kids from a Sabdo and uh, immigrant with his parents to the United States. And one day what happened, he had a fever, a coughing, uh, some like uh, um, flu like symptoms. Then they go to see a doctor. And what the doctor going to do? The doctor will be doing something like a testing. Okay, we just draw a big, a easy picture. Okay. What happened? First of all, they say open your eye, or open your mouth. Let's say, ah, oh, the kids is doing that. Okay, when they do that, what happened? We're using cotton swab to touch the tonsil area. You will feel in the tonsil area, it is soft, it is bleeding, it is also a little bit of greenish color. And this is what we call pseudo membrane. And second, the doctor also noticed that. The neck is a little bit swelling. So right here, the neck is like swelling like this. Okay? We call it bull neck. This is a bull neck, is a nicky name. It is indication of lymph nodes swelling. Which means that uh, immunology cell or immunology system started to reaction for this toxin. Now what type of the symptoms later on will have? Neurological symptoms could be. That means difficult speak, difficult swearing, Swarming and double vision. 
When you see it, looks like two images here instead of one. That's a neurological symptom. Now, we have a question for you. Why we give you an example is saying immigrant kids. It is not for discrimination because in the United States, this is not a risk. A uh, natural born citizen in the United States is required to do is annual or periodic immunization. When you look at the picture there, the schedule there, which is well described, what type of the vaccination you have to do, and for corner bacteria diphtheria, there is a vaccine specifically for that, or could work for the elders, called DTAP. What all these letters stands for? The D means Ponobacteria diphtheria. T means Clostridium tetanus. A means acellular. P is bird teller pertussis. Pertussis. Cause whooping cough. So that is one shot, three drops. And if you recognize this, or you still remember by yourself, you could check with your parents. The immunization schedule is like two months, four months, six months, one year, could be two years, and another shot later on. All these multiple shots for this vaccine, we call it is a booster. Now, there is a remaining question, why we need a booster? Because the vaccine basically will be working for two lines of your immune system. If you remember, it's T cell line, and the B cell line. So we call it a humoral immune and the cell mediated immune. For this booster, for this DTAP, it is only activated T cell line. Once you only activate the T cell line, the memorization time is very limited. Therefore, you need to have those booster every couple of times, every couple of periods of times. That's the reason. That's why we always give you an example is from the immigrant kids, okay, for the United States, because natural born US citizen will require to do that. Now we want to talk a little bit about what is the toxin. So this toxin is an AB toxin, a typical AB toxin. A typical AB toxin basically have two domains. The A domain, we call it toxin domain. The toxin domain will cause exotoxin. And the exotoxin, basically here, is to uh, prevent the host cell RNA transcription. And how they stop host cell RNA transcription, they will be attacking elongation factor 2. And also, it is a, a nicotine adenine dinucleotides related elongation factor too. That's an A domain. And uh, another domain is a B domain. B domain we call it a transmembrane domain. This is what we call transmembrane domain. Transmembrane domain basically is called bleeding. And what happened is in the body, both of them at the beginning they are together, 
generator in the cell. And this in the cell, usually the pH is lower, about like five, is an acid environment. And then they will be separated. And the deep B domain, transmembrane cause bleeding, find another A subunits, and they'll combine to repeat this process. Now, what's the infection of this exotoxin? This will cause neurological symptoms. Difficult speak, difficult swallowing, and double vision. Now, why it will cause this type of the toxin? Where it comes from? Uh, a very simple theory about that is a long time ago, there is a beta phage. The beta phage integrated the exotoxin into a bacteria. And the genome has been stayed there forever, and later on, like a parasite to the host, and it will be affect its toxic impacts. And remember, exotoxin, it is even resistant to heat. And later on, we have a terminology for that. This is called the lysogeny conversion. Very similar to the endocytosis theory. They think a long time ago is a beta phage carrier, diphtheria toxin, and uh, integrated into a corner bacteria, and the genome sequencing is stay there and the later on become a toxin. And this theory, we call it a lysogeny conversion. So, when you see here, you see the bacteria survive there, you also see there is a toxin, so what type of the treatment we should use? Anti-toxitant and antibiotics. We have to use both, okay? Both of them have to be together. If you do not have a vaccination, didn't do any of the prevention, proactive, proactive intervention, then antioxidants and the antibiotics need to go to do the treatments. Now, I also want to mention in the clinical area how we really diagnose it. Um, this is kind of thing is a little bit complicated. Remember, we had a patient coming. Okay, we're using cotton swab to find the tonsil area. So this is from our cotton swab. And we carry on the bacteria. Now this swab, first of all, will be streak plating onto a very special bacteria called cysteine terulright blood agar. It's a very selective medium, but also it's an enrichment medium. Now how do you know this is a common bacterial diphtheria? It is black colony. Because of reducing sugar. Oh, sorry, reducing salt. That's why it is a black cotton. And then this cotton swab also we have to transfer into a reference media. And this reference medium, we also call it is a transport media. And typically for corner bacterial dexeria, it's called a Lea lepros transport media, okay? Leo Lepros transport media. And this had to be sent onto reference lab. And the reference lab in West Virginia, Kentucky area is in Lexington. And they have to further identify it is corner bacterial diphtheria. And that is ideally has to report to the CDC. 
Uh, the case right now is not too many, most of them coming from immigrant kids. So if you go to the CDC website, to see coronavirus, diphtheria, lots of the cases for immigrants. And we will have some questions for you to practice for coronavirus, diphtheria. Now, last thing I also want to mention, although this is an infectious disease, however, this pathogen is localized in Hangzhou area. It is not really going to go every other places. However, this toxin, this AB toxin, is very invasive. So that's some tricky thing there. The pathogen is there on the township area, localized, kind of safe, limited, but I want to say that. But the toxin is very invasive, going to go everywhere. OK, so that is what we have for the coronavirus diphtheria. And just to give you an example how we talk about this. Now you can go back to look at your slides. So when you take all these notes, like a flash card, then you can go back to look at your slides. This is called a bacterial diphtheria, palisades, underneath face contrast the microscope, grand positive club shape, rods. And then this slide, which is tells you it's gram positive, resistant to drying, uh, nasal fragile section, airborne transmission. And this is a deep area, what it looks like. Uh, see the membrane, the tonsil area, you see the bone neck. And you have to do antitoxin, antibiotics. But in the United States, it shouldn't be a problem um, because we have a DTAP vaccine. And then you also could see the toxin, how they transfer. The toxin is transferred to the heart, kidney, nervous system is major. And this one, we will mention later on in the immunology section again. But here, we want to just emphasize, look at the DTAV, diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis. You have to do multiple boosters because it's only activates T cell line. So the memorization is not very long. This is a little bit about the mechanism behind that. You see the AV toxin. The other endosome going to generate. So two domain, transmembrane domain, toxin domain. And basically, it will be to prevent the RNA transcription of the elongation factor too. And uh, this is the one slide. That's another picture, which shows you the mechanism behind that. Um, it's more detailed. OK? So that's the first thing for coronavirus diphtheria. And uh, um, lots of the things we can talk to all those passages, but this is the first one, and then we spending time talking about it. So next one. Next one is another big topic. We want to mention many doctors. Uh, lots of the reason for the cause of many doctors. 